when you want to make a super heterodyne radio you need an EF filter for the intermediate frequency and here you see in this video such an EF filter uh, there's a can on this filter from tin plate and that shields the filter um, inside I'm open it up now take the can apart and when you watch the whole uh, filter closely you will see a dumbbell a ferried uh, rod on this ferried rod uh, a winding and also on one of the terminals from the ear filter there is a small capacitor I think it's not very well visible now but uh, when you open such an uh, ear filter yourself, you can find it in an old uh, AM radio, you will find such a capacitor. And that is the uh, frequency dependent part from the ear filter. So it's drawn here, that's this capacitor. Of course the whole uh, filter uh, is in resonance in the real situation. But uh, here is the... Uh, frequency dependent part, tank circuit and this is the um, winding with which the EF uh, signal is, is coupled out to another stage in the EF amplifier. Perhaps I'm going to make it better visible with a lamp. hope it will succeed. Um, here inside, in this hole, this small hole, there is that capacitor, small capacitor. It's hidden in this case. And um, I made a small uh, test oscillator. And with this oscillator you can see uh, whether the filter works or not. It's a classical uh, oscillator. You will find it often in books and perhaps also on the internet this uh, type of oscillator transistor NPN two capacitors here uh, emitter resistor collector resistor here and um, many oscillators with bipolar transistors are made this way one K resistor 50k potentiometer to set the oscillator to its working point so that it oscillates very important don't forget it don't take a fixed uh, value capacitor here and here oh, sorry resistor here and here the point where it all starts to oscillate is very critical that's why this potentiometer is used this is the coupling capacitor and here is the test coil and um, I now connected this EF coil to the oscillator and you can see on the oscilloscope that it oscillates. The voltage is uh, quite high and uh, that's why the transistor is more or less driven into saturation so it's not a good sine wave but when I change the voltage it gets more sine wave like and of course when you have a radio oscillator it always has to have in a classical radio old school radio it has to have a sine wave form the oscillator signal it may not be a square wave like this because that causes much too much uh, harmonics and you will hear that as noise and uh, birdies etc in your homebrew radio but this oscillator was only made to test and uh, we can take one conclusion from this uh, test and that is that the coil, this coil has a good Q, a good quality the quality is good enough to let it operate as an EF uh, filter so when the coil that you connect to this test oscillator oscillates and has a good waveform you can be sure that the um, coil is good, usable in a radio, whether as, as an EF uh, filter coil 
or whether uh, an oscillator coil or even an antenna coil. When it oscillates it's okay. You can be sure that, that uh, the coil has no flaws. So this oscillator works from 400 kilohertz. I did not test that exactly 400 kilohertz. I started with 455 kilohertz and it works up to 2 megahertz. In fact a little bit more 2.5 or even 3 megahertz and um, so you can use this oscillator uh, to test your coils and even to make a VFO in, an, uh, in a radio. But it only works up to uh, 2.5 megahertz. There are better circuits of course that work on much higher frequencies but I developed this only to show uh, as a, how it works and as a test circuit. I will also show now what happens when we change the 50k potentiometer here to another value. It takes the transistor out of its resonance. So here you can see now I move it slightly and it stops oscillating. So very necessary that uh, potentiometer here. 